Have you ever noticed that you're far more motivated to exercise each day if you do it with a group of people than alone? In a similar way, God has created us for fellowship. We're social beings, and we do it better if we have a social support system. This is especially true in spiritual matters. Throughout the Bible, small groups are highlighted as one of God's methods of strengthening our faith, increasing our knowledge of His Word, deepening our prayer life, and equipping us to share His message. The ultimate goal is to focus on bringing people to Jesus. Working in small groups can help not only ourselves, but others as well. It's a place to share responsibilities, to nurture and grow spiritual life, and for caring relationships. The Bible includes numerous examples of small groups praying, fellowshipping, encouraging one another, and working together for Christ. It's fascinating that specialists tell us that the ideal size for group interaction is between six and 12 people. This is the exact size that both Moses and Jesus employed in forming their groups. As the disciples observed Jesus caring for the needs of people around him, they learned how to use their gifts. Spiritual gifts are like different parts of our body. They can't function alone. Our bodies are not just separate organs, freelancing away, doing whatever. Each function is organized into a tightly knit system that works together. Our efforts can be much better focused and greatly multiplied in groups rather than alone. The church in the New Testament grew from 12 to tens of thousands of Christians in just a few years. They came from different backgrounds and their diversities of gifts, cultures and experiences contributed to the growth. Small groups are a safe haven for people to express their problems and discuss shared concerns. Many non-Christians will initially feel more comfortable in participating in a meeting in a home than in attending a traditional church service. The focus of small groups is service. As a ministry, it will soon die out if the focus is in themselves and not in others. If the small group becomes self-serving and little more than a discussion group, it will fail in its purpose and lose the reason for its existence to lead people to Jesus, nurture their faith, and equip them to share the message. Is it possible that God is calling you to start a small group in your home? How about you start praying about the people God may be impressing you to invite? You may be on the verge of the most spiritually rewarding time of your life.